Look at your neighbor next to you. Tell the neighbor you have come out old. What the enemy intended for bad, God has taken for good. Therefore, today I am victorious in Jesus' name. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Yes. I know we have some visitors, but we acknowledge them. What we'll come and feel at Jesus? We will welcome them at the appropriate time after the service. Now it is time to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm waiting for the technicians to send me off to go stream, not live stream. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. We are waiting in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you in this service. And I want to welcome our live stream, those who are watching us, Grovery. I want to welcome you to Christ Worship Center International. This is a church where everybody is somebody. Christ Worship Center is a church without boundary. You come as you are and you occupy. You come as you are and you are checked in. Hallelujah. No, when you are checked in, you are ready to take a flight. Therefore, when you come in, you are checked in. Hallelujah. Your faith is confirmed to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of Luke, 7th chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Last Sunday we were offline, but we are back. Tell your neighbor, we are back. Because God is on our side. Luke 7 verse 11 and I'm going to read the gospel of Luke 7th chapter we begin from verse 11 if you're there say Amen, amen. I'm going to read now now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. I want you to underline the only son, and she was a widow. That statement has it. Hallelujah. Amen. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he said, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. And I write the word, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. I want you also to underline, stood still. He said, young man, I said to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up, began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then the fear came upon her, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went through all Judea and all the surrounding region. Father now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I do present myself as your mouthpiece. Use me to speak your oracle. Use me to speak your statute. Use me to speak your commandment. Use me to speak your ordinances right now. By the anointing and by the power of the Holy Spirit, yes. equip and help me to expound and interpret the scriptures yes. with the revelation and understanding and with the power yes. that this one will not return back to you void yes. without accomplishing the purpose which it has been intended for. Yes. 
Therefore now we are not ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. We are resting in the overing spirit in the building in the entire compound. We render it powerless in the name of Jesus and we command it to submit at the feet of Jesus and we declare the blood of Jesus and the angelic ministry are surrounding this service right now. In Jesus name to God be the glory. Amen. Now shall we rise up and we decree and declare what we normally do. Amen. I'll count one, two, three. One, two, three, let's go. This is my Bible. I believe what it says about me. I'm about to receive the word of God. And my life shall never be the same again. I shall be empowered. I shall be impacted. I shall be demolished. Holy Spirit, help me now to receive the word of God. Amen. 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 Today you did good. Amen. Take up your seats with joy. <laughs> Wow, I can see you are in front of now. Now, 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 now you are giving me some more energy. Amen. I can see I've got good students. Amen. I've got a good class. The title of my message this afternoon is Your Hope is Not Dead. Jesus will raise it up again. I'm going to repeat Your Hope is Not Dead. Jesus, King Jesus, will raise it up again. Okay. The scripture we have just laid, if we go back a little bit on the same chapter 7, we see Jesus healing a centurion servant who was sick and at a far distance. This man was a Roman soldier, a very senior soldier in the military, he had the power that was in Jesus and he had the miracles that Jesus was performing. Then he traveled all the way from Rome to come to Jerusalem to come to here and to come to present the need of his servant who was sick. And this man tells Jesus, no, you don't have to travel with me all the way. What I want you to do, just speak a word. I want to declare this morning there is power when the word of God is spoken. Amen. So this man got a revelation that Jesus doesn't have to be there presently. His power is equally enough to heal a servant regardless of the distance. The word of God is not measured. It is not, a, it is not, a, a, it is not a, to broke by the distance. It can travel from miles and miles and miles and miles away. Amen. Amen. We can speak right now and those people who are watching us live, whether they in Europe or in Africa or in Caribbean, they can receive the same power that we are tapping from this altar right now in the name of Jesus. So now Jesus finishes the ministry because Jesus was here on earth to do the work of the ministry. Now he is led of the Spirit to go to a city called Nain. N-I-A-N-A-I-N. Nain. You can call it Nain or Nain. It was a nation city in Israel. Now Jesus is moving with his entourage multitude. As you remember, if he performed a miracle, people were following him. Many people were following him for miracles and others were following him for food. Oh, praise be to God. <laughs> need the people in our meeting. Some are following for their miracles to be healed and others are angry because Jesus was a performer of miracles. Okay. You remember very well the issue with the fish and bread. Okay. When he was able with just two ropes and the three fish to feed 5,000 people. Let me tell you servants of God. God knows your problem. And God can minister it to you even if you don't have what it takes right now. Yes. You don't have to have finances to eat the food right now. Yes. You don't have to have finances to accomplish that which you are hoping to accomplish. Yes. God has diverse ways to minister to us. Amen. Now, Jesus is coming with his entourage. Now, what happens, this journey from Capernaum, because when he healed this man, the Sanitarian servant was in Capernaum. Capernaum was 21 miles away from Nain. 
And this city was a whole calling, and even up to today, it is called Nain. Praise be to God. Now, Jesus is coming. And always when he's followed by the massive crowds, <laughs> together he's entering Japan with his disciples. It's not a small crowd. It is a big crowd, and they are walking. Oh, hallelujah. I see as they are walking, multitudes, people on the streets are waiting, and Jesus did not spare to touch anybody. What you have, you give freedom. For what God has given us, we give it freely without charge. Jesus never charged anybody who came for healing or he came from a prophetic man. He just released the power and instantly miracles took place. Amen. Hallelujah. We're together. Amen. Now, the Bible talks in verse 12. And the kids come with somebody. What do you read verse 12? And when he came near the gate of the city, I have got good news for you about a gate. Yes. A gate is a place where authority is exercised. Amen. A gate is a place where you can be let in or you can be shut. A gate is a place where you are filtered and you are measured whether you are worthy to enter or you have to be denied access. Now the Bible says at the gate, always whenever you hear the gate, you need to pause a little while because the gate, that is where authority first is exercised before someone enters the compound. Amen. Two scenarios happen. There is a crowd coming out of the city, a crowd coming out of the city accompanying a widow telling her only son who was her hope. And the Bible says she was a widow, which means her husband had already died. She is so desperate. She is so vulnerable. She is so discouraged. She is so fearful. She is confused. She is crying. She is weary because her only son, she don't know my husband is dead and that was only her only child. At least my husband is gone. This son will take care of me. Then the sun dies. Have you been at place where you have been hoping for something and that is where the door is completely shut? Where you are expecting this is the only step. If I don't get in here, I'm done. It happened to this widow. Our holy hope is gone. The sun is dead. And if somebody is dead, he's dead. Come on. And if somebody is dead, what is the next thing to bury? Now, the crowd is following this woman to go help her bury her holy hope. And I want to say this, people of God, be very careful who accompany you. When you are mourning, there are people coming to accompany you to come and put a zeal is done. They are coming, wailing, and they're crying, but they are not crying with the sorrow. They are crying with the celebration to say, look now, you are finished. You thought you were somebody. Today you are done. You are coming to witness and bury your only hope and you put a seal and the crap and say forever finished. Tell your neighbor God is up to something. Tell your neighbor, don't rejoice when I'm down. Don't rejoice when I'm down. Soon and very soon I'm coming up. At the gate, life meets with the dead. Two things meet. Life, Jesus, and the coffin that they meet at the gate. I want you to see the place of authority. I am not rushing tonight. I have a very powerful sermon for you. Life is coming from left, and the dead is coming from the right. But they meet at the gate. Things stand still. When life meets, with the death, the situation has to be still until the master speaks. Amen. You are in a place where nothing is happening. You have reached the end of the road and you are at the gate. Stand still. Because Master Jesus is about to prophesy something new. Nothing new. Listen, he's about to nullify what has been spoken earlier. Yes. What has been decreed earlier, yes. Jesus is nullifying yes. it right now yes. at this moment. Yes. If only you will stand still and hold your peace. Yes. When you are in trouble,
trouble, you don't have to shout or to cry or to make noise. What you need is to sit down and wait and hear the voice of the master. What you need is to sit down and wait and hear the direction. Now, life and death meets at the gate. Are we together? Yes. Life and death meets at the gate. The dead was being carried off from the city to be buried outside the city. They never used to bury people in the city. They would bury them right in the outskirts, in the desert, in the open area. The city was so sacred not to keep dead bodies. Amen? Not to keep graves. You know, grief, dead is not something good. Dead is not something glorious. So it has to be kept away from the city because it was a holy city. Praise be to God. Now the giver of life is coming to give life <laughs> Jesus is coming being guided by the Holy Spirit. The Bible does not say what was bringing him to the city. When God knows there is a need in your life, he will send them. Amen. Help is coming your way. God knows your geographical status, location where you are right now. And he sent them help. Now, Jesus decided not to send angels. He decided to come himself. God is going to come himself and visit and comfort you because you are mourning. I see this woman and she is accompanied, she is waiting, but there are people who we call professional mourners. Do I have people who come from Kenya who understand we normally have professional mourners in the western past of our country? I don't want to mention the tribe, but you know, if you come from Kenya, you know. We have, thank you, Sister Maureen, we have professional mourners who are hired to come and help to wail and to cry and to eat. When there is dead and mourning, they slaughter animals, they slaughter bulls, they slaughter goats, people stay in that compound 24-7 for two weeks until they eat and make sure they have finished everything. Now they come and they are not really crying from the ah, they are called professional mode. And they are not really crying for real. They are just doing it professionally to encourage the spirit of money. Now I see in this entourage of the woman, the widow carrying her son, they are professional mourners. They are coming and saying, who oh, is dead? Let's go and enjoy. Let's go and bury our hope. They are crying. Who oh, is God? Is God complete? And they are not really serious that he is God. They are just doing that professionally. Be very careful. There are people following you. When they see you are down, they come with the spirit of trying to encourage you. But the inside their heart, it is not to encourage. Inside their heart, it is coming, they are just coming to celebrate. Ah, they are coming to feel good that you are done how you used to say you are somebody. Today you look, you are finished. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. I come against the spirit of disappearance and interruption upstairs. There is a spirit upstairs of interruption. Now two great multitudes in on and against. Your problem and your victory are going to face one another head on. Amen. Amen. Your problem and your victory, your success, they are coming to me this afternoon. Amen. When things reach the end of the road, there is no more damage can go any further. You have been tormented, you have been pushed enough. You are meeting, your problem is up and your victory has also come at the peak. Right. So now you are meeting with your victory at the peak of your problem. Speaking prophetically. I'm not speaking religiously. I'm speaking prophetically. This church has reached at the peak of problem. Today we are meeting with our victory and our success. I discern things in the realm of the spirit. Today our battle is over. Finally, Paul says, finally, brethren, finally, brethren. Today is the third finally, brethren. Christ worship center is out of the bush. Christ worship center is out of the blood.
will know them. They give our wealth. They give our wealth that's come. Hallelujah. You have been given ultimate and have been given deadline. That you're gonna lose your job. The give of life has come. Oh, yeah. another one's been opened. Your yeah. dead yeah. situation yeah. is going to rise yeah. up again. Even though your situation may be dead, oh, yeah. it will arise again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, the Bible says Jesus spotted the widow. Look here, look the miracle. A big multitude. Jesus is able to single out the person who is in need. These others are waiting. The professional owners are waiting, but Jesus did not see them. No, no, you didn't get that. Yes. Among the multitude of maybe 300, 500 people, Jesus is able to single out one person. The widow, he did know her. There was no mark on her head. They were all wailing and crying. But because of her heart, yes. hey, the Bible says God does not look at our outward appearance. He looks at the heart. He looks at the heart of the widow. God is looking at your heart because the problem is so intense. Your deed is so Therefore, he can't hold it back. Yes. Jesus spotted and said, Woman, yes. weep no. not. Let me tell you, God cannot minister to you when you are weeping. Mm -hmm. When you go to a place of hell and you are weeping, you can't be helped. You have to stop. Oh, yes. Yes. You have to hold that peace. Yes. Now, when Jesus met with the crown, they all stopped. They couldn't fall. Oh, no. Let me tell you, it didn't come to stop. They know the authority in the head. Yes. They all stop and he start. And the single southern woman he says, Woman, oh weep not. Jesus saying in this congregation, weep not. You have been so mightily ambushed by the devil. You have been so much oppressed and crushed and squeezed until you can't breathe. Jesus is saying, I know your problem, oh, yes. do not win. I know what you are going through right now. I know it because I found the Bible says even before we open up our mouth, he knows our problem. Jesus did not wait for the woman to say, I am the widow with a dead body. Jesus spotted and said, We know. I'm saying to you, church, we not. Those who are watching me and say, we not. Yes, indeed. Your hope is dead. Yes, what you are hoping is dead. When you are trusting God that that's the only route you want to use and the door is shut. We not. The only job you are waiting for and they are saying you are no longer going to pray. We not. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The door you have been knocking 24 7 and praying and fasting. Oh, yeah. And you are left at the door and they said, Too bad, we can't help you. Oh, Weep not. not. Oh, In other words, cheer up. Oh yes. my God. Amen. Something good and great is about to happen. Oh, yeah. Amen. The Lord cannot tell you to stop weeping and then he leaves you unattended. He says, weep not, because something great is just about to break through. I am about to transform your life. I am about to reverse the issues and the situations that I have been undermined. The undermined situations, the prayers you have been praying, no answers, there has not been no breakthrough. Now, something good is breaking through. Breaking like the darkness in the morning when the dawn is about to come it's too dark you are now at the center you are at the entrance of the dawn for the day to break through and the sunshine to come up no more darkness come on say no more darkness when we are crying very 
weeping and murmuring and mourning, we must remove the grave clothes. Amen. Jesus, in other words, to that woman, now I want you to remove the grave clothes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I'm about to touch your life. Amen. I'm about to touch your holy hope. Yes. But remove the garments of grave. Yes. We have been covered with the grave clothes. Smearing death wherever we are turning. Yelling negative talks. Yelling gossip messages against us, the church. God is saying today, remove the grave clothes. I'm about to change your identity. I'm changing your identity from death to life. And anything that does life, is active. Amen. You will start to be active once yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. And I want us to go to the book of John 11.32. The Gospel of John 11.32. We see somebody who had died and Jesus said he moved the great clothes. John 11 and verse 32. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I read. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, he fell down to his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came without weeping, you see the same thing. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? That's Lazarus. They said to him, Lord, come and see. Mm -hmm. Verse 35, Jesus went. Mm -hmm. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb, it was cave and a stone laying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Mother, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time he is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come out, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with the grave clothes. Did you see that? Yes. With what? Grave clothes. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Remove the grave clothes and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen the things that Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went away, the Pharisees, and told them the things Jesus had done. Church. Somebody dead for four days. The body organs are already done. They are decomposed. They are rotten. But they give of life. The Bible says Jesus has already been told about Lazarus' sickness and he delayed two days. Sometimes God will wait for your problem to reach the end of the road. So that he comes to prove it's not because of the power of science or power of man, the power of God. Lazarus in the grave for four days. The sisters, even the other father, the, the, I didn't read, the other one also said, Jesus, if you had, she waited for him at the gate, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said, I am resurrection and the life. I don't have to be there. Jesus doesn't have to be there when you are going through the problem. What you just need to do is to report to him. They reported to him that Lazarus 
is dead. And now Jesus says, Father, prove that you have sent me. And today, I'm going to speak because of these people to know that I am your son. Do you know sometimes we have to speak to prove to people who we have doubting promises. Even in the church, people come, they don't believe the message. There are people who doubt the word of God. But I want to say this, as a prophet of God, God is beginning to prove that once he speaks his word, he does not return back to you. If you are a prophet of God, ordained of God, and connected by the Holy Spirit, not connected by your own power, not by your education or by your religion, if you are connected, by the Holy Spirit, you will speak words and they shall come to pass. Amen. Now, what happened? I go back to the Bible. They removed the grave clothes. And Lazarus was dead and tied because when you are tied and covered with those clothes and clothes of grave, you could only jump like this. And the hands like this. You see, the dead man is bound on the feet and the hands. I don't know why they do that. Jesus said, untie it. The Lord is on time. You are being untied yes, and the grip clothes are being removed. Yes, so that you can be free. So that the stench, the smell, you will not smell that stench anymore. Amen. You shall smell the aroma of God. Amen. The presence of God. Amen. Now when Jesus met with the coffin, number one, the Bible says it was an open coffin. It was an open coffin. It that it. He doesn't need to pray. He didn't say, Ramashata, Rabakunda, Rababa. You died in the name of Jesus. I command you, right now, to rise. He is the king of life. When, let me tell you, brethren, when you know you have the authority, sometimes people come, I tell them, just go. It is done. Amen. Pastor didn't even pray for me. There are times, there are miracles that you don't need to be prayed for. Because when the breakthrough is just the one to speak, yes. Jesus just touched the prophet like this. And the Bible says the young man who was dead sat down and started speaking. Amen. Amen. The dead being sits down on the coffin because it was an open coffin. They used to carry like a stretcher. The only thing is covered by the grave cross. He said to remove the grave cross. The man sat down and started talking. And when he started talking, he gave him to the mother. Amen. Let me tell you, when Jesus did this, when Jesus ministers to you, he gives you your miracle. He cannot continue to hold your miracle. Right. Now, he's comforting the woman to tell her from now on your identity of a mourner is already transformed. Amen. Your son, your only hope that was dead Amen. is back. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. The one who was dead stood and started speaking. You are going to start speaking again. Where you could not speak and the decree decrees. Do you know you reach a time when you can't pray and you are so much bombarded by the enemy that you are in need, you cannot even pray, you cannot even open up your mouth. God is saying your mouth is released again. You are going to start speaking prophetic words. You are going to start decree decree and you are going to start to move to your destiny. Yes. Jesus stops the procession of burying the hope. There are people following you to bury your only hope. There are people celebrating that you are already done. God is stopping it. God is saying the situation was done still until he comes. Hold your peace until God comes to visit you. Sometimes we are in rush trying to help God. I'm told to go to this church. I'll wait on you. Amen. I will not quit. Mm -hmm. I will not give up. Amen. The pressure is too much. Tell your neighbor pressure. 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 Tell your neighbor pressure. pressure. Do you know what is the work of the pressure? The work of the pressure is to help you take off. Yes. Let me give you a story of jet and a, and a small plane. A Boeing 767, 787, and we have the 787 liner. He has four engines. And if it takes too long to warm those four engines, he warms those engines in sequences. One, slowly, and the control of so many buttons on the cockpit and the cabin pressure, everything, the landing gears, everything is checked. The temperature, the attitude. 
I know what I'm talking about. I know those guys, that's what they mean. So it takes too long to warm up the engine and it does not take off immediately. After the engine, I warmed up, it drives itself slowly on the taxiway. You know, taxiway is the place where it drives before it goes to the landway. There is a taxiway and a landway. It drives itself slowly. And let me tell you, actually, even to reverse, it has no reverse gear. It has to be pushed by a tractor. Did you know the planes don't have a reverse gear? No, I didn't know. You need to push them places, you don't have a reverse gear. And God will send the help for you to be pushed. No, you have been pushed to be positioned to face your talent. Ah, you have been in the wrong direction and you cannot go any side. So God will send the help and you are pushed. Then you'll be turned and you'll be left there now to take off yourself. Yeah. You don't need the tractor to take you where you have been because it is too slow. Yeah. It's work is only to do what? To push you reverse. And then the plane goes to a place called noise abatement area. Noise abatement area it is where now it will warm those engines again to full throttle. Come on, full throttle. The all fire is pushed to the wings and it is pushed to the engine, it goes back, that is what fire, that pressure is what pushes the plane to take off. Now, there is a small Cessna 50, like the one I used to train. Cessna 50 has only single engine, the front one. It, it takes like 10, 15, 10 minutes to warm up and it take off. It does not need even a long runway, very short runway. It warms up, and it takes off. But the Boeing 747 takes ages. Why? Because of the journey that entails. Mm -hmm. Because of the wind, the cargo, the passengers, yes. the journey, and the altitude they ask to fly. The single engine flies to 10,000 feet, but the Boeing goes to 30 to 40,000 feet above the sea level. Yes. That you know, at 40,000 feet, it is faster to shoot with the aerodynamics, you are able to shoot faster than down here. Down here, there is a lot of pressure. Now, what I'm trying to say is there is a lot of pressure. Christ Worship Center is a Boeing 787. Oh, it is not a single issue. Oh, it has taken us too long to take off. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Because our journey is far. Yeah. The attitude you're going to try is higher. The runway is too long, it looks like it won't make it. Mm. Ooh, my God, it sees the perimeter fence, the end. It thinks that it will not make it. But slowly and very slowly it takes off. And then it goes higher and it, it goes, it positions itself in the international airspace. The small plane went and alive, but that doesn't go international. Christ Worship Center International is going international. We are not a local church. And what I want you to know, when the Boeing reaches that attitude and stabilizes, and now you hear ladies and gentlemen, you can adopt on your belt and you can start going to the restroom and wait for the refreshment to be served. And the pilot has adoption for what we call autopilot. He switches positions and everything, and the autopilot, he comes out and he can come and chat with you. It is coming a time we're going to be autopiloted by God. And you will not need fast button to be there. Oh my God. For Christ worship, send to continue. Because God Himself will, hallelujah, we will put autopilot that gear and the plane will follow the direction. Yeah. What am I trying to say tonight? The pressure has been there in your life. Thanks be to God because that pressure, were it not there, you would not come out as your cocoon at the place where you are your comfort zone. So many of you have been comfort zone and the pressure which has been coming it is to push you to move to your destiny. Jesus allowed this woman only help to die so that he can exert pressure enough that she can cry more than a son back and the restoration. Now let me tell you, when God restores your problem, it does not mean the same way it was previously. He gives you a brand new life. Yes, Pressure. Have you been going through pressure? No. And the prison work? 
Have you been going through pressure? It is helping you to take off. Amen. It is helping you to take off. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, he said, Arise. Jesus will not only speak to your situation, he will touch it. Yes. God is going to touch you tonight. Yes. Your situation, he is going to touch it to prove he has power even of your dead situation and also to achieve those around you thinking you are finished. They will see you bounce back to life and proceed with your destiny. Hallelujah. We reach at a place that we have been a stopover. Tell your neighbor stopover. Stopover. Now, I like to narrate things of the, of the airplane so much and the fright. And a place of stopover does not mean it's the head of your journey. Mm -hmm. You're just relaxing to take a break to refresh. Because the journey is long. Amen. Where you are right now, you are at a stopover. Amen. Don't abort your destiny. Amen. The stopover is not your destiny. Yes. You have to refresh yourself. Yes. For the journey will take miles and miles and miles. Yes. You will cross over nations and nations and nations yes. until you land to the place of your destiny. Amen. This woman, a problem, meets with the maker. When you meet with the maker, do you know what he does? He does a makeover. Amen. When you meet with the maker, yes. he does a makeover on you. Yes. There are some places, some weak points, God fixes them again, removes the whole parts, fixes them. You know, heaven, he has all the parts for the body. Yes. That's what he has done with the pastor. He has given me new parts of a young man. Yes. Tell me you look like you are 39 4. Yeah, I say yes. But a few years ago, you look at me, you think I'm 60. But I met with the giver of life. When I met with the giver of life, I was done because of the thing of only two weeks to live. I said, No, devil, you are a liar. What would have happened to you people who were already ministering to in the grave? No. And the Bible says in the grave there is no wisdom, there is no knowledge, there is no, knowledge, there is no working. There is nothing in the grave. When you are going in the grave, there is no wisdom, there is no working. Therefore, what your hands finds to do, do it now with all the might. That's why Pastor is here without the mind. I said, fire! Fire! Holy Ghost! Fire! Nowhere. I shout. You know why I shout? Because this is my altar. Amen. God has positioned me here. This Amen. is the altar. Yes. Therefore, we are not sharing with the devil. Amen. The fire of God. Yes. And I have to decree that fire upon each one of you Amen. to come upon you to your destiny. Amen. Most of you have been burned by spirits, and I say from today, the fire of God cast every chain, every grave clothes. Some of you have been covered with the grave clothes. I prophesy this afternoon. Amen. No one is walking out here with a great soul. No one is walking out of here with a dead situation. Today is your day. I declare and declare today is your day. The goodness of any demon in your power that is contrary. God is saying you are very close. Have to be removed. Jesus is touching your coffin. Do you know why you have been put? It's a coffin. It's an open coffin. Indeed, they have not covered you. But they have covered with the good clothes. As long as you have the good clothes, your identity means you are dead. Yes. Not physically, some spiritually. Yes. God is removing those good clothes. Yes. What dreams you couldn't dream, you're starting to dream again. Yes. Things that you could not speak, you are going to speak again. Yes. You know, when you are dead, you can't speak. Yes. The Bible says this young man came back and sat down and started to speak. Yes. You will start to speak again. Yes. You will start to decree again. You will start to go. You know what happened? The crowd that was scouting, they made it to bury a dead son who came back to life. They went back to the city. You're going to go back again to the city. Now, they did go back morning. They go say, Oh, a great prophet. They went to the God. People who have been your enemies, they will come to help you. Those who are in your distractors, 
will be the same people that will accompany you now. As you look at them, you cheer up. You are loved of God. Cheer up your place of God. God loves you. God cares for you. They go singing with you. Hallelujah. Even the song they don't know, they have to learn to sing. The dead boy who was dead sat down and began to speak. Amen. You shall rise up again Amen. and they start to declare your destiny. Amen. And the fear of God came to those who were in that area and the crowd. People are going to fear your God yes. because of what he has done for you. They expected yeah. you not to make it. Yes. They expected this church not to make it. Yes. The day we have, oh my God, Woo. 20, 50, 70 branches. Yes. Oh my God, even Pastor can only be here maybe once, twice in our rise in a year. Uh oh, oh no. praise be to God. <laughs> you know, guys, when you talk again about another ministry, that's, that, that, that's a, we have another ministry yeah. which has been given back from Grace Worship Center. Yeah. People think we're in the basement. We are not in the, the give of life has come. Yeah. The give of life has come. Yeah. And it becomes that which was dead. Imagine Grace Worship Center has given back to another ministry. Yeah. God anointed believers church international. Yeah. It's already yeah. a new church yeah. founded by Pastor Martin Katharina. Yeah. So what am I trying to say? We are going to give back where we've been buried. Yeah. Transmission from yeah, number one, number number two, 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 two. in number four and five, yeah. you are shifting with the supersonic speed, yeah. speed that is faster than the sound. Yeah. You remember that jet called supersonic? Yeah. It was faster than the sound. Yeah. Now get something which is faster speed, and it is ahead of the standard yeah. sound. Yeah. The echo is ahead of the echo. Praise be to God. Never write me off, for God is writing me in. Where well, people are written, you know, the, when they say written off, like in an accident, that vehicle is unredeemable. It cannot be retrieved. It is salvage. But God is coming to redeem it, repair it, put new parts, and put it back on the road. Amen. What the insurance call light of the day, this is light off. We have to throw this and go and dismantle it and give you another one. Amen. Now, where people are saying you are right off, God is not written you off. Amen. He has right you in. Yes. He has redeemed you back. Amen. He has brought you back and he has all the parts that you need in every store. Amen. Let me tell you, when we get sick, we don't ask for the parts to come from heaven. I ask for new organs. When my organs were told they have been shot, I ask for new organs, for new pancreas, I ask for new kidney, for new every lungs. And now I am shaped. I go back, they do the EKG, they say everything is perfect. Amen. Amen. The heartbeat is perfect. Yes, yes, yes. The AKG, the, the, the AIC is perfect. Yes. Why? I ask for new parts. Yes. When you know to ask new parts from the maker, 
When you have a car and it has a problem, you go to the shop, they go to the dealer, they order those new parts that are compatible, compatible with your car, that for that car and with the, with the real specifications. God has specifications of your need. Every need, he knows it, it is tailor made, he knows the measurement, he knows the weight, he knows the height, he knows the color. So stop, sometimes stop complaining, we complain a lot. I have asked God to give me what we call peace to wait and see what He's just about to do. Amen. I'm going to wait and still I see Christ Worship Center go to the next level. Amen. You are going to wait and see your children go to the next level. Amen. You are going to see your life and your relationship go to the next Amen. level. That which you have been bothered, you been bothered by tonight, I want to decree prophetically that your life is back. Amen. You are out of the grave, you are out of those uh, uh, the grave clothes, and you are out of the coffin. You know, they call it open uh, coffin, but still you are dead. I don't care, and it is a wooden coffin. You need to come out. Jesus is touching your coffin right now. The coffin is representing the situation that you are in right now. Jesus is touching that coffin and saying, Rise up! Rise up! Rise up! Rise up! You know what? You cannot continue to be sleeping. You have to be awake. Yes. For you to do something, not to be active. Yes. Some of us, we are still sleeping. We say, oh, I'm fine, but I'm sleeping. Wake up and arise. Amen. When you arise, Hallelujah. you take up the bull Amen. with the horns. Amen. And the journey is great. And the woman went back to the city praising God. Amen. You are going out of this service praising God. Amen. We are leaving this place now. I'm done. We are going to the next level. Yes. We are not going to think about the coffin anymore. Yes. We are not going to talk about the grave clothes anymore. Yes. We have been given new garments Amen. of life. Amen. Bright white garments of life. Amen. Of holiness and impurity. Garments that will glorify God wherever we step. We have that color, that perfume, that good smell. Oh my God. No more the stench of death. People have been smelling us like dead people. People have been smelling this church like there is a dead aroma. There is no more dead aroma. It is a sweet fragrance aroma of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You say, mm, what is that? Mm, I want to come to this church. Mm, I feel the presence of God. They start to smell the aroma of God. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your situation which looks dead, Jesus is bringing it back again to life. Having said that, I want to speak to each one of you. Because each and every one has a need. Each and every one of you has a petition. And as a servant of God, you didn't just come to church to warm the chairs. You came to meet the giver of life. I am speaking the giver of life is ministering right now to your need. I want everybody sensitive now. This is a moment of miracle. Don't be bypassed by the move of, of God. I don't want any movement. This is a moment I want to decree the fire of God. Even those listening to me over the media, those who are watching me wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hand. God is touching your situation. As he touched the coffin, lift up your hands. As he touched the coffin of this womb, of this woman's son, God is touching your situation precisely where it is he did not touch the woman, he touched the son because the problem was not the woman, the problem was the son. I only hope, your only hope which seems lost. God is touching it as you watch the prophet of God. I want to decree and declare right now. Your dead situation is coming back to life. People in church, I want to lift up your hands. I decree the so 